Hey friends. It's been a while. I'm Leah Noel, and I'd like to welcome you to Rhubarb Patch Studio. Um, I know that my subscribers and a lot of my Instagram friends probably recognize me as Aviatrix Stitcher. And I've decided to do a name change. Um, I plan to change my Instagram handle as well. Um, although I haven't been on Instagram yet this year. Um, I think I'll say more about my name change at a later time. But I thought I would film outdoors today, um, at least this introduction, because we're right next to, um, this is actually two, two of my plants, um, two of my rhubarb plants. I have a total of four. Um, I planted two more down that way. Um, those down there get a little bit more sunshine but they're still um, recovering from the transplant, so they're, they're still pretty small, um, and I won't be able to pick them uh, this year. But this is, um, let's see, this is the first day of summer, so happy summer, everybody. Um, I've been wanting to come back to Floss Tube for a while, um, it's really difficult to come back after you've been gone for a while. And I know that um, some of the more seasoned floss tubers might understand that. Um, there just gets to be a point where there's so much to say and you don't know where to start and you don't know how to go about it. And so I'm just jumping in today to say hello. I hope to be back more regularly. Um, at this point, I can't commit to a specific schedule. Um, I did finish grad school, so I have my master's in English. Um, it's such a relief to be done, and it was a great experience and um, I have a really um, exciting opportunity um, on the horizon, on the very near horizon. Um, but I don't want to get into a life update quite yet. Um, for now, I think this video will just contain my finishes for 2022 just so that we can kind of have some place to start and so I will share with you uh, my finishes in this video and in the next video I haven't decided yet what I'm going to share in my next video but it could be new starts um, or current whips. I, I'm not really sure. Um, sometime soon I would like to do that glorious whip parade that I promised. Um, that has been, uh, daunting. That has been a daunting task that I set for myself because my craft room is not very well organized. So that's been one of my um, post-grad school um, to do things is to organize my craft room. And I've been making a lot of headway with that. And once I feel like that's more under control, um, I think it'll be easier for me to do a whip right. Um, so I think that's all I'll say for now, um, but I'll check back again after I show you my finishes. So 
I've had 11 finishes so far this year in 2022. Um, and I don't have all of them with me, but I did take photos and at least one video. Um, so I will insert those um, when I edit this video so that you can see all of my finishes. Um, the first finish was in January. Um, I stitched a freebie out of this book. Um, I went to StitchCon last year in 2021. It was my first ever retreat. Um, and um, it was a lot of fun. While I was there, um, the cicadas were out, like um, brood X is what they were called. And in, in this um, StitchCon booklet, there were a lot of free patterns. Not, I mean, not free. They were, there were included, there were included patterns um, to the retreat. So <clears throat> uh, I selected one from here and um, I'm just trying to block the pattern here. So This is what the original pattern looked like. There's words on it, and the words say, I survived StitchCon 2021 and Brood X. Um, I knew I wanted to stitch the cicada, but I, I wasn't, um, I didn't want to stitch the words, and in the annex at StitchCon, there was a blue flower display and Janine McGowan had a free, um, like a freebie StitchCon pattern um, available to pick up there. And so I picked it up. I really like the quilt block look. This is the mock-up. Um, this is the mock-up. So in each block it says, it spells out stitch con, and then there's a, like a quilt block, 21. So I knew I liked that. Um, and when I was kind of looking at both of the patterns together, I could kind of see how I could maybe mash them. And so that is what I did. I had a piece of 32 count Silver Moon Belfast linen and I selected a handful of purple flosses that I really liked and I um and actually these were purple flosses that I had picked up at Keepsakes. Um I just kind of put together a purple floss bouquet and and bought bought it and um and that's what i decided to stitch this with and then instead of stitching this um um quilt block spacer block that's where i decided to put the cicada and it just so happens that it fit perfectly um without um stitching over any of these other letters so um, mine says stitch con 21 and then I have a little cicada in the middle and I'm so happy with how it turned turned out. Um, I really don't, I'm not a finisher so um, I have a lot, all of my finishes, most of my finishes are just unfinished like this but this was the very first finish of the year and I was really happy to get it done um, because it was um, my first Stitch Retreat memory. So. Okay. Um, the next finish this year was a gift. Actually, the next two finishes were gifts. The first finish 
was a modification of this pattern. This is um, Cats with Golden Collars by Kit and Bixby. Um, I wanted to stitch this for one of my instructors um, who is extremely fond of his cat, Tegan. And his cat is a black cat, um, but she does have a little bit of brindle in her coat. So um, what I did is I just picked one of these cats and I stitched just the cat and the snowflake. So I kind of had to um, guess how to finish the corner that's covered up by the second cat. And then I took these two little motifs and I put them over here to be centered on the cat. And then instead of stitching the alphabet, I stitched the name of his cat, which is Tegan. And I mostly used like this color palette, but I selected flosses from my stash and fabric from my stash. Um, I don't remember what I stitched it on, but I'm, I believe it was a 32 or 36 count um, raw linen or coffee, some kind of maybe like a brew, Brenda's brew. It might've been Brenda's brew linen. I think it was 36 count. So anyways, I put together I think this is the one that I had a video for, um, but I will just insert right here a picture or video, whichever one I have of the finish. So here is my FFO of one of my instructor's gifts. Um, I just finished this. Um, I laced the back and um, I have So this, um, I don't know if you can tell from this video here, but the cat, I, I actually blended two different blacks. One of them was like a really dark brown because my instructor's cat, black cat, is a little bit of a brindle. So, um, and the cat's name is Tegan. Um, and yeah, I think it turned out pretty nice. Um, this is just a regular old frame, like tabletop frame from Michaels. And, um, I think it works pretty well with, with, um, the image here. And I had to put this mat in because I couldn't find a small enough frame that looked good. Um, so this is a five by seven frame, but the image is only about, I think three and a half by five. And they do make frames that size, but they're, they're all really simple. Um, and this needed a little bit more character, so. So I am going to gift this tomorrow. Oh, the other thing I was going to say, um, with the tabletop frames, especially because I put the mat in there, there's not enough room to seal it um, with glass. So I had to take the glass out. But, I mean, I prefer my cross stitch without glass because I like the way it looks. But, um, yeah, it's just not... It's just not possible. Um, let's see. Just... Um, that's it. So, I'm pretty happy with that, and like I said, I'm gonna gift it tomorrow, so... Making this video in advance. Yeah, hope you enjoy. So then um, the, the next one um, was another modification of a pattern. This I got off of Etsy from um, Panochka, I believe. It's um, 
P-U-N-O-C-H-K-A. That's on Etsy. And um, I will link the shop below, um, as I always do when I, when I mention shops. I don't know if, um, if this is still available um, because I think that this was a Russian-based company or is, is a Russian-based company. But anyways, um, I really, I've always really liked this pattern. Um, it's, you know, very gothic. And I ha I made a good friend in, um, while I was in grad school. And this friend, um, really loves plants and so much so that she finished her, um, bachelor's in English and she um, took some extra science courses and she will now be going to grad school for horticulture, um, which I am really excited about for her. So, um, so I thought maybe just stitching this um, part of the design with grow, um, leaving out the bird and just putting two dots on either side, um, I thought this would be appropriate because the ivy is her favorite houseplant and actually um, she's the one who gave me this beautiful spider plant um, which I've named Charlotte um, because it's a spider plant and um, it's it was looking a lot better last week um, before I put it outside for a little while I think I I think I scorched it a little bit, um, but it's it's a really hardy plant, and that's why she gave it to me because um, because she knew that it was it was easy to care for, and that's what I need. That's what my skill level is with house plants. But anyways, um, I don't have my finish here, um, and I know I didn't take a video of it, so let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, I stitched it on. A mystery piece of linen but I do think that it is heather by color and cotton because it came in a grab bag um, fabric bundle from color and cotton and it is like a light smoky purple and I think I've seen um, I think I've seen heather linen by color and cotton before and I it just matches my memory of that fabric so I think that's what it was and I I used um, the called for greens which are just DMC but I used coal weeks weeks coal weeks direct coal um, for the black um, and I think it turned out okay I think it maybe would have been better um, stitched on a darker linen but it's okay I really like the way it turned out, and she likes it too, which is the important thing. Um, the other fun thing about this, and not every not everybody's gonna think that this is fun, but I usually sign my pieces with my initials and the date, but for this piece, I stitched a piece of my hair into the <laughs> into the design. Um, because, you know, it's a little bit Victorian, um, you know, a little bit gothic, and I thought that she might appreciate how um, weird and intimate that is. So, um, yeah, I, I stitched a piece of hair in with some of the darker floss. So um, here are some pictures of that finish. So, um, the black cat was finished on March 5th and grow, this is what I called grow. I don't know what the actual, it's, all, it's called grow bloom care is the full pattern name. Um, but I just stitched the grow portion, so I called it grow. Anyways, I stitched that, I finished it on April 1st. And then um, both of those were fully finished at the end of May. Uh, or beginning of May, actually. Anyways, doesn't matter. 
Um, the next finish I had was on May 2nd, and I had one, two, three, four, six. I had six finishes in May um, after grad school was over. So you can tell that I was just like chomping at the bit to finish some of my projects. So this was my first finish in May. Um, it's called Give Thanks. No, no, no. I call it Give Thanks, but it's called Jeremiah 3311 by the Cooler Design Studio. And this is a picture. I'm going to try to insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like. I stitched this on account of 36 count dried petals by um, Fabric Flare. And I, I stitched mostly called four colors, except for um, I made a little herringbone stitch here um, in a metallic thread of some kind. I, I don't think it was DMC metallic, but it might have been. I don't really know. Um, and I also changed the purples in these plums um, to be a warmer reddish purple rather than um, like the bright blue um, purple that they had. And the nice thing about this design is that it works in Pattern Keeper. So the Cooler Design Studio patterns, um, if you order the PDFs from the Cooler Designs website, which I will link below, um, they work in Pattern Keeper. And obviously the backstitch doesn't show up um, on Pattern Keeper, but once you're done with the full X's, um, it's easy to just open up the PDF and just kind of look at where the back stitches go. So um, yeah, I, I snuck my initials in here and the date. Um, otherwise, I think I think everything was basically called for. I don't I don't remember if these were supposed to be purple or a different color. I mean, like these ground um lines but i i wanted them to be purple because i wanted it to be pretty warm okay the next finish um i i finished this on may 6th and this is called living free um by the victoria sampler and this is um, stitched for a friend who I met in flight school. And um, he's a non-traditional student like me. Um, he's actually older than me. He's about, he's about my dad's age. But um, we, um, we just became good friends and um, we were basically some of the only non-traditional students in our flight class and um you know um i just wanted to do something make something special for him uh because he is going all the way to commercial um commercial training and i also know that he appreciates um my cross stitching because he saw um, he saw one of the gifts that I gave to a, a different instructor and um, was complimenting me about it and I thought you know he would appreciate something like this and so um, I was just interrupted there. Um, anyway, um, so this is for my aviation friend and it it speaks a little bit more to his personal interests. Um, we have um, we have a mutual friend who owns a farm and um, she raises sheep and he has helped her um, shear the sheep and he really enjoyed it. And, um, and so when I saw this pattern, I thought that he he might really like this and the pattern 
says, um, live like it's heaven on earth. But this friend is not a religious person and I don't think that he would appreciate that text. And so um, I free, I freehand embroidered happy, 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 happy day. Um, so as you can see, I still haven't finished this, like fully finished this. Um, he also hasn't fully completed his commercial license, but um, I should be hearing from him any day now, um, hopefully with some good news. Um, and when that happens, um, when he gets his commercial pilot's license, I hope to gift this to him. Um, originally, I, I really wanted to put this in an oval frame, but number one, I can't find one that's this size. And number two, I, I don't think I left enough margin, fabric margin, to do that. Um, and so I'm going to have to find some kind of frame. It's an odd size. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but I have some time and um, this friend is also local. Um, I know he's not going to pack up and leave anytime soon, so... Um, I'll just get this framed as soon as I can, but it's gonna have to be, it's gonna have to be in like a square, like a rectangle frame. It'll be all right, but anyway, I really love how this turned out. Um, I really love it. And I have enough fabric on this side to do the same thing. And I probably will like for myself. This is um, 28 count. Grass Linen by Wichilt. And I did not use the called for floss. I just used what I had in stash. This is one of my favorite tree flosses. It's called Wood Trail by Gast. And anytime, I can't help myself, anytime I stitch a sheep, I have to use Whisper. Um, it's rainbow. It's a rainbow floss, but it's like, a, it's fuzzy. I don't know if you can really see it very well. Um, but I just, I can't help myself. I, I put in a piece of Whisper floss with, um, since this is 28 count, I used two strands of oatmeal cotton floss by Gast, and then I, I, put in one floss of Whisper with that thread, and it gives some really delightfully fluffy coverage. Anyway, there's that one. Okay, on May 7th, I finished this little, this small one. Um, this is also something that I started this year, I think, in January. So you haven't seen this before, just looking at my notes. I started this on January 8th. Um, it's called, it's called The Love Sampler by Words of Praise. I got this from Kitten Stitcher in the treasure chest portion of her website and it was only a few dollars. Um, the cover photo is in black and white and the chart itself is um, it's hand drawn. Okay, so hand drawn and it's big. Um, it did not come with it did not come with um, DMC numbers. It only tells you um, white slash cream combination for X. Um, you know, so I don't know if it was meant to be like you pick your own colors for this, um, but and or or I don't know if Kitten Stitcher put this key um, with the DMC numbers um, and the names, or if this was from the shop um, where she bought these treasure chest items from. Either way, um, I had 
a different idea in mind for what colors I wanted to use. Because when I looked at this cover photo, yes, it's in black and white, but I saw like a mission, mission style um, building or church um, in Bermuda because of the palm tree and just the way, you know, the um, there's wrought iron over the windows and um, just the shape of everything. So I just thought, you know, I'm gonna look at pictures of Bermuda, uh, Bermudan, Bermudan, is that how you say it? Bermudan architecture um, and be inspired from the colors, you know, what colors to use from, from those pictures. So, I found a very tropical piece of fabric in my stash. Um, this is called Glory, um, and it's 32 count, it's a 32 count Lugana um, called Glory by Picture This Plus. And it's a beautifully vibrant piece of fabric. Um, and I selected the side that looked a little bit more like a sunset. And, and I just used all of those beautiful tropical colors. And I took a little bit of license with, um, with the window panes. Um, I didn't stitch those exactly as charted, but overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, I just think it's very sweet. I put my initials and the year, um, just tiny little back stitching over here. And I actually have another uh, words of praise sampler um, to go on this other side. And I might actually be able to do um, two, but I'm not sure. I think I might just do another one over here and just call it good. We'll, we'll see, but either way, um, the one that I have lined up as a companion to this is um, light unto my path or lamp unto my feet or something. You know, it's from, it's from that um, verse or um, anyways, so I'm just going to use the same color palette for the other one, and I think it's going to be a really nice companion piece. So it was, um, it was a really simple, easy stitch, just easy to pick up and just do that one. The next one, um, I don't think you've seen this one either. This is a, this was a new start. Yeah, this was a new start. Oh, I did, I finished this in just a couple weeks. So this was, I, I don't know what the name is. It came in this card by, um, this, is, this card was made by Hands Across the Sea. And I received this as a, um, a gift from Trisha, who is on Instagram. We became Instagram friends. Um, Trisha has amazing projects. I love what she stitches. And um, she, I think a lot of people know her. Um, I, I think her handle is P-R-E-B and then some numbers. But it, I haven't been on Instagram in a while, so I, f I forget now what her handle is. But this is from Trisha. And the the pattern is, from what I can tell, it, it isn't taken from here. Um, I mean, if I'm wrong about that, let me know. But um, the pattern is, like, there's no mock-up of this pattern, so I'll just hold it really far away so you can't really... Um, so that's that's the um, the pattern. You won't be able to... Uh, stitch from from holding it that far back and um, you'll notice that the colors 
The colors um, that are called for are pretty muted, like these flowers are brown and yellow and um, there's two shades of green, like two or three shades of green and the dress, is, the dress and the clothes, all the clothes are blue, parts of the pot are blue. Um, but you know what? The pattern reminded me of my own garden and actually that's why Trisha sent me this pattern in particular. She said that it reminded her of me and my son out in our garden. Um, we, we started gardening in 2020 um, during the pandemic, during lockdown, and it's just it just brought us so much joy um, that year. And I wanted to commemorate that um, that summer, you know, just making a new garden and spending all that time with my son. Um, so I selected a piece of fabric and I'm trying to think now what this fabric is called because I think this is this is an this is a mystery fabric. Okay, it's coming back to me. This is a mystery fabric from um, Color and Cotton Fabric Grab Bag. Um, they're really hard to come by now, um, now that people kind of know about them, but I actually snagged a couple of them um, a few years ago and I just haven't used all the fabric yet. Um, so this was a mystery fabric from that and it's like a beautiful green, like a limey green. It's almost like a key lime pie kind of a green. And I just picked very, very bright colors for the pattern. So, um, all right, I did a couple, I did, I did some personalization. First of all, you can tell the colors are very bright. Um, I used pink, orange, yellow, purple, and white for the flowers. Uh, I picked a a brownish green for the stems and for the grass. And I actually think this is um, a color in cotton. Um, it's named after some kind of evergreen tree. I think maybe it's balsam. I can't be sure. But anyways, um, that's what I used for the darker green. And then I picked a, light, a really bright green for the leaves and the um, other green accents. I love blue and white pottery, um, so I, I tried to kind of replicate the just bright, rich colors of those blues in, in that style of pottery. Um, Otto has this yellow shirt with these neon colors, and um, so I kind of replicated that in his little suit here um, with some shorts and my favorite color is purple so I put myself in a purple dress. Um, I put 2020 as the year um, because I wanted to commemorate that year and my initials and then I sort of um, I freeformed some cursive backstitch um, that says Otto and mom plant a garden. Um, so I'm really happy with how this turned out. So thank you again, Trisha, for that really sweet pattern. It was really fun to stitch too because all of those flowers are, um, I guess you could say specialty stitches, but they're like long stitches long stitch, French knots, and satin stitching, and just back stitching. So it's like, just really, um, it's just really fun. And I love, I love patterns that aren't too symmetrical. And this was like, obviously not symmetrical at all. So anyway, I really enjoyed that one. Okay, the next finish was on May 30th. And this is a finish for now because, um, I'm waiting on some some extra things to put in, but oh, let me show you. This is Felice Navidad. Honestly, I'm not sure if you've seen this um, on my channel yet or not, but I've been stitching this for
for I want to say a year. I might have started stitching this last summer. Um, and this has kind of been my evening stitch. I leave it by the TV, like by my spot on the couch. Um, and in the, in the pattern, you'll see in this row, um, after the XYZ, that's when the initials, that's where the initials go. This says AJM and then Merry, Merry Christmas. So I just left off the AJM and the first Merry, um, just to leave some space uh, for, for some options a little bit later. And then I also did not stitch the year here. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't put my own initials on here either. Um, but anyways, I'll, I'll come back to this at some point, but I don't know when. Um, so let me put something behind it. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, it was a lot bigger than I anticipated. Like it, it seems like it's a small pattern, but it's actually, let me, let me give you the dimensions here. It's 125 by 203. So it's, um, it's, it's fairly, it's fairly large. Okay, so I actually stitched this mostly in the called four colors. Um, I put this on 32 count. Oh dear. 32 count. Heart, Heartland. Sorry, I had to check the tag. Um, this is 32 count Heartland linen by Picture This Plus and mostly called four colors. The only, I had two substitutions um, because I didn't have them in my stash when I started and I wanted to kind of stitch this from stash if I could. Um, and it just turned out that I, I had all of the flosses except for two. Um, so the two that I substituted are this orangey one, you can see in this triangle um, border uh, band, I mean. And the other one was like a light yellow, and um, the T I think is is another substitution. Those are both color and cotton, but <clears throat> anyway, I'm really really pleased with how this turned out. Um, something that attracted me to this pattern in the first place was the border, and if you know anything about me you might already know that I don't enjoy stitching borders, especially when they are so repetitive. But I didn't mind stitching this one. It was very strange to me that I didn't mind stitching it. Um, it just had like a very simple cadence to it. Um, it wasn't too long. Like the, um, the cadences, the counting wasn't too long and it wasn't too short and um, there's actually two, two greenish yellowish colors in this border. Um, you can see like this stretch has, um, it's a little bit more muted than this color here. Um, so that was interesting. Um, that, that made it more interesting. And then there's also two color reds. There's a darker red and a lighter red. So it, it's still, um, it was complex enough to keep me interested. Um, but not, um, not too complex and not too boring. It was just perfect. But anyways, what attracts me to the border is, um, that it reminded me of, um, like antique Christmas garland, you know, the, um, gold fuzzy, um, it just looks like a boa, you know, like those, um, 20s, um, 20s style like boas that women would wear, like the fluffy kind. But in the 50s, I think 50s and 60s, they had those fluffy tinsel kind of gold garlands and then like with red 
red glass balls. And that's just kind of what this reminded me of. Um, and it wasn't until I started stitching that um, I noticed that it's actually leaves and a circular flower or something, but I'm just kind of, in my mind, it's that antique gold uh, garland with red, you know, big red glass bulbs. So yeah, sometime, um, at some point, I don't know when, um, I'll fill in something here, um, initials, and then a date there. So I'm calling this a done for now. Okay, I have three more finishes. The next one I also don't have in my possession because it was a gift for um, my son's kindergarten teacher. I stitched um, Blooming Spring Pinwheel by Sub Rosa on Etsy. This is what, it, what the design looks like. When you order from her on Etsy, um, you get a PDF, but um, she puts your, she prints your name on the PDF. Like she puts your personal name, whoever, whoever purchases it, <clears throat> excuse me, whoever purchases it, um, that's the name that gets put on, excuse me. Um, so I don't know if it works on Pattern Keeper or not. I didn't try because it was a very simple design. And um, and I just didn't, I didn't need, um, I didn't need to have it in Pattern Keeper. It, it's, um, the design is printed on one sheet and it's large enough to see. Um, I didn't really have any issues with the symbols or um, or anything, it was very easy to read. So I just printed off the one sheet and that's what I carried around. And since it's a PDF and this was just like my working copy, I didn't feel bad about folding it and I could put it in a really small bag. Like it was really, it's kind of, it was a great um, travel project. Um, so I don't have a video of my finish for this one, but I wanted to use all color and cotton materials. So I did. Um, I got my hands on a piece of 16 count Ada um, in the aged paper colorway. And I really liked it. It was a nice warm neutral. And then um, for, the, for the flowers, I used four, um, I used four flosses. This dark pink is called Dahlia. This is called Barn Red. This is called Light Coral. And then I used a white that is actually more of a pink, a pinkish white, and I don't know where it is. I don't know if I stole it for another, um, for another project already, or um, if I just, if it fell on the floor or something, I don't know where it is. And I, so I don't know what it's called either, but, um, but these four were really nice together. And then um, for the basket, I selected this color and cotton espresso. Um, and you'll see in the photo, I love how the basket turned out in this color. Um, it just is very nicely variegated and it just looks, it was gorgeous for the basket. And then for the green, I wanted something nice and bright. Um, so I picked avocado. So those are the colors. Um, those are the color and cotton um, materials that I used. And I will insert a photo of the finished piece. Um, so that frame was actually a Mill Hill frame, and um, those come without any 
um, they they come out they come with just the frame like there's nothing to hold the the um, project in place so I actually just went to my Michaels store and I asked them if they would put in if they would drive some points into the frame and they did it for free because I just needed like four and she's like I'm not gonna charge you and I was like thank you <laughs> um, you know I I didn't I, I was willing to pay I was willing to pay I thought it was gonna be like a few dollars um, but she was just really nice so anyway um the teacher um, sent a note saying that she really loved it so um, so that was nice to give. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say about that is um, I decided to use white in the alphabet portion. So at the bottom here, there's an alphabet and I decided to put my son's initials in white and I also put the school year. So instead of putting 2022, I put 21-22 and it, the O and the H were in white. And then the other special thing was that I asked Otto to stitch the O himself. Um, so it was just kind of a special a special little touch. Um, his, his ability to cross stitch came up in one of our student teacher, I mean, teacher, parent teacher, sorry, parent teacher conferences. Um, it came up in one of those meetings and she just seemed tickled that he um that he can cross stitch and so I thought it was a special touch and I think you know knowing her I think that it it probably went a long ways so that was really fun um Otto has not been cross stitching other than that um I think he's lost interest in it um it takes a lot of patience and He's, you know, he's six, um, and he has other things that he likes to do now, so he doesn't really, he doesn't really enjoy cross-stitching with me anymore. Makes me a little sad, but maybe, maybe someday. <sighs> two more. Um, I had two recent finishes. One was on June 11th, and it was Octopus's Garden. Now this was a gift that I got a long time ago from my friend, um, Caitlin, who used to be Big Apple Stitching, and I don't I don't remember what her new Fostube channel name is, but um, I'll link it below, like I always do with the, um, the people that I mention, so that you can find her. But this is Octopus's Garden um, by Ink Circles. The pattern was a gift from, um, from Caitlin, and Octopuses are my favorite animal. So um, when I saw this pattern, I knew I wanted to make it more realistic. And um, and I wanted to make the octopuses look more like the giant Pacific octopus, which is red. And so I had a piece of fabric. This was um, a sample size of Haunted, 32 count Haunted Linen by Picture This Plus. And the linen itself was actually a gift from my friend Mev, who hasn't been doing floss tubes anymore, but um, but her channel is still out there. So I'll, I'll link it in case you wanted to check out her channel. Um, they're older, they're older episodes, but like older updates, but possibly with some encouraging, we could get her to come back. Anyways, this is my finish. And I stitched mostly my choice of threads. Um, and you'll notice that I did not include the border, um, three borders. I did the bottom border, um, but I left off the two side borders and the top border. Um, because I've been stitching this, I, this is a very small design. I've been stitching this for like three years now or something crazy like that. And yes, it's partially because I've been distracted by other things, but I think the other part was that I just didn't know how I wanted to handle those borders because they don't seem like natural, you know? Like, and I, I just wanted this to look like a snapshot of, um, of the ocean. 
So there's giant sea kelp there, and um, I did I did these in two. Um, it was a blend of two DMC colors. These are probably gentle art reds. Um, the greens are all DMC actually. Yeah, I think everything was mostly everything was DMC except. I, I can't remember now, but anyway, I just wanted it to look natural and I'm really happy with the result. And this, um, without the without those three borders, this will actually fit in a four by six frame. So I was like, well, that's a no brainer once I figured that out. I'm just gonna leave those borders off. Yeah. Very happy with that one. Last one came from this Seascapes number three book. Um, so I I have every design in this book kitted up, and there's no mock there's no mock up um, or model photos of these um, scenes. So I'll just hold it back so you can kind of get an idea of what's in here. So um, I've stitched this before. I think I showed it in my last video. This is the one that I stitched this time. And you'll see it's just black and white. Um, all of these are 70 by 98 um, stitches. And the copyright is 1980. So by the Virginia C. Creekman. Um, but when I was paging through this, um, this was actually on the freebie table at StitchCon last year, and when I was paging through it, I just, I was, I just fell in love with all of them. So, um, more beach scenes, beach scene, um, this is hand gliders and surfers. These are the two that I probably won't stitch. I mean, maybe, I'll never say never, but I probably won't stitch those. Um, a couple of wooden ducks, which I also won't stitch those. Um, here we've got a couple of boats. I probably will not stitch this one, but I do want to stitch this one and then these two bird ones. And then um, I think there's another one. Yeah. So there's like a marina here and like a, a verse or something. Um, it says, Eternal father strong to save, whose arm hath bound the restless wave, who biddest the mighty ocean deep its own appointed limits keep. Oh, hear us when we cry to thee, for those in peril on the sea. So, I mean, it's, it's cute, but I, I probably won't stitch that, like, as it is. So, anyway, I, I really love this book. Um, last year, I went through and I just kitted everything, like, all of them up. I have a whole bunch of these um, little um, scrap pieces. They're not scraps. They're like sample size pieces, you know, like the 9 by 12 or, or whatever it is. And I just went through and I found um, colors that I liked for each of those and they're all different counts of linen. Um, so, you know, they're not going to be super cohesive, but they're just for fun and they just take me a few days to stitch. So basically whenever I'm in the mood, to just stitch something ocean related. Um, I take one of these out and I've done two so far. So this is this is the second one that I've done. I did this on 40 count flagstone linen, which I actually think this might be a little piece of lakeside. And I don't know why I started it so low. Actually, I do know why I started it so low. I started it because I wanted to use a Q-snap and I just wanted to um, have it fit comfortably in there, so I just started towards the top. Um, but now that I realize that this is a piece of lakeside linen, like, I just feel kind of silly having wasted all of this space up here. This is the second time I've done that with lakeside, but anyways, it doesn't matter. I like how it turned out. I did make substitutions for the beach colors because with the first one that I did, I stitched it 
mostly in called for DMC colors and they they were a little aged. They seemed a little bit aged. Um, so when these called for some similar beachy colors from the first one, I thought, you know what, I'm going to make it my own and I'm going to make it a little bit more realistic looking, you know, lifelike. And I like how it turned out. So this is number two. It doesn't have a name. Maybe, actually, maybe it does. Yeah, this is called Surf Scene in the Seascapes number three book. And a very small little thing, and I, I really like it a lot. So that does it for all of my finishes in 2022. Um, I did want to share a um, some. I, wa I wanted to share um, some things that I received from the Duck Derby raffle. Um, so the Duck Derby. So many of you know about this already, but um, the Duck Derby is something that Emily C. of Eclectic Possessions puts together every year for the company that she works for. Um, they advocate for children um, in the foster system who, I believe it's like um, when the kids need to go to court, um, they just, they advocate for the those children and um, I think they do a lot of other things aside from that, but um, I think that's the bulk of it. And anyways, um, every year they do a fundraiser called the Duck Derby, and you can you can buy ducks to enter into the Duck Derby, and um, and then they also kind of do a raffle. So they they um, they select winners. Um, it's it's this whole big thing. Um, I've purchased ducks for the last few years, um, maybe since I learned about it um, a few years ago. And this is the first year that I actually won something from um, from the portion that Emily C. puts together. So Emily takes um, donations of like stitching items and then she puts together these prize packages and when you send her your Duck Derby receipts, um, she does a random draw for everyone who, um, who bought ducks. And when you win, you actually get to select what prize you want. And I think that that's a really special, um, a special way of doing it because it's a lot more work for her. Um, but it's just really fun. So this is the first year that I won anything and I just wanted to show what I got because um, just it's just so it's just so generous. Um, whoever has donated these things, I mean, just very generous. So um, it might be it might be multiple people that donated um, these charts and items. Um, but she didn't Emily didn't say, um, so I don't know who um, donated these items, but thank you to whoever did. You know, I'm extremely happy to have them in my possession, and I, I definitely want to um, work on some of these. So um, I was one of the later names to be drawn, so there wasn't um, there wasn't as many packages to select from. But when I saw this one, I was like, well, this would have made it to my, you know, top five choices anyways. Um, so I just felt really fortunate to get them. Number one, this was a surprise. I don't think this was in the picture, but I got a project bag and it's very pretty. Um, I, this is totally my style. I love this. I would have picked this for myself, like, you know. The inside is um, just this really pretty um, complimentary 
print to um, to the outside. So I really, really like this. And it's um, it's large enough. Um, it's large enough to fit a booklet, which is also one of my favorite features in project bags. So there's this project bag, and I already have a project in there, but it's not from this. Um, it's not from the package that I received. So um, the package that I picked was called Specialty Stitch Package. So all of these charts have some kind of specialty stitch, and I'm really excited. So um, this first one is a Hardinger packet, and um, I really want to learn Hardinger. It's just a matter of making time to do it. And um, I'm really excited to have this very simple package put together because it's got fabric, um, it's got fabric and floss and a, looks like a simple design on the front. So this will probably be what I start out with, like as far as learning how to do it. Um, so I was really excited about this Hardinger um, kit. This is a pattern called Le Jardin Francais or the French Garden um, by Liz Turner, Liz Turner Dio for Creative Needlework. Um, I actually had this pattern on an Etsy wish list. Um, some, I, I don't even know where I found it, but I remember, I remember seeing it before I um, selected this package. <laughs> um, I, I really like this. I really do. I know it's like symmetrical, but I I also really like maze. I like gates, um, like ironwork kind of a thing. Um, bushes, garden. It's like a landscape, you know, but it's specialty stitches. Anyway, I'm super excited about this one. Um, here's another one um, by the same designer called... Um, 17th century Irish garden. And this is another um, very beautiful design. I mean, they're all beautiful. I just love it. Um, this one is called Winter. It's number four in the Four Seasons series by Indigo Rose. Um, designer name is Catherine Strickler in Vir Virginia Beach, Virginia. So um, that's winter. And yeah, obviously, I I say obviously, it's not obvious to everybody, but I, I live in the upper Midwest, so winter is a huge part of my life. <laughs> so um, I am drawn to winter patterns and things, but I just really think this is very fun looking. Um, it's it's petite, but like all of those bands will be really fun to stitch. There's, um, it has a picture of the, all, all four, but this is just the winter, um, just the winter pattern. This one had an extra surprise. This is called Midsummer Quilt Dream by Lavender Wings. That's the design. Look what was in it. These are thread gatherer silks. I just, I'm so happy to have these. Um, I mean, yeah. This one, Just Nan. Snow flowers, and it comes with the embellishment pack here. Just gorgeous. This one, um, this one is by Laura J. Perrin Designs, and it's actually, um, is it called embroidery tapestry something? I think it's just embroidery, right? Like it's um the kind where you need canvas and um, wood frames. So I actually bought 
wood frames because I have one more to show you that is um, and this this comes with the beads um this is called daisy chain sorry and this one um yeah I've actually um I've actually considered purchasing this one but um I think this is actually a pretty expensive pattern it's called Needle, it's by Needle Delights Originals by Kathy Reese, and it's called Mint Julep. So I really want to try this style of needlework. Um, so I bought wood stretchers um, and some mono canvas. I don't have the threads. Um, but I really, I really want to like try it. You know, I want to, I want to try doing it sometime. And this is just, I mean, I really, I love, I just love how, um, you know, every, every little thing is different in there. Just, I love it. So thank you. Um, thank you to Emily, Emily C. And thank you to um, the people who put together the um the event and thank you to those of you who donated to the prize packages um i was i was just blown away um by the generosity and um yeah just i'm really i'm really excited to um to get into these so so thanks. So I hope you enjoyed seeing all of my 2022 finishes. Um, thanks for visiting with me today. I hope that you will subscribe if you have not done so already. Um, like I said, I don't know when exactly I'll be back. Um, the 4th of July is coming up and we do have some family plans um, during that week and um, and just some other things so I'm, I'm really not sure if it's going to be one week or three weeks um, but in any case I hope that you will subscribe so that you know when my next uh, update posts. I feel like I probably wanted to say a thousand other things, but I know that this video is already over an hour long and so I'm sure I've said enough for one day, for one update. Um, before, um, before I say goodbye, I do want to give a quick spotlight mention to a floss tuber who is relatively new. She's got just over 500 subscribers as of today. Um, her name is Deb and she is the Traveling Stocking Stitcher. She makes me laugh. Um, every, every single video she posts, um, she's just got a very subtle sense of humor and um, I think that if you enjoy the things um, that I stitch, you probably will enjoy what she stitches, although she stitches mostly stockings, Christmas stockings, and, um, and traveling, um, traveling themed patterns, like projects. Um, she is, she and her husband are very well traveled, and, um, she's more of a monogamous stitcher, so her updates are really more of um, sharing past finishes and she's done just a crazy amount of stockings um, a lot for her family members but a lot for herself um, just as an example she stitched an entire stocking for each of santa's reindeers and um they're just delightful. 
I mean, and she's delightful. So I hope that you will go and check out her out um, and subscribe to her channel um, so we can boost those subscriber numbers. Um, you'll probably hear me um, give her a spotlight mention again at a later time just because here we are at the end of this video and probably not everybody made it this far. Um, but I did, I did just want to sneak that in there, um, spotlight mention for Deb, the traveling stocking stitcher. Um, I think that does it for today. Um, like I said, I do want to share um, more of a life update later, um, but that's another kind of big topic, like, I've been gone for so long, um, you know, where do I, where do I begin? And, um, you know, a lot of good things, um, a lot of good things to share, um, just, just not for this video. Um, anyways, I hope that all of you are well, wherever you are, um, It's been, it's been really nice to catch up with you again, so I hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone. <laughs>